Right, welcome to this tactics and showcase video. It's for Imperial Knights, and it's the Knight Valiant that I have here. Uh, so it's the Dominus class Imperial Knights. Uh, it's Knight Valiant I've pa had painted. We will take consider the other uh, variation that you can go for as well. So in this video, uh, it will be a showcase. You get a chance to see the model, uh, and then we'll take a look at the rules, loadouts, configurations, ways to enhance the model, uh, tactics and strategy, and then we'll actually apply. Uh, we'll, make, we'll show some examples of some firepower uh, and so on just to illustrate as best as possible how this Imperial Knight can work but it's a, a deadly unit, it's over 500 points it's a scary unit for sure but um, we'll take a look at it now in this video first thing I'm going to do uh, will be to show you the model first of all so here it is it is epic, it's absolutely arms to the teeth you know, Imperial Knight's got a weapon here and here maybe one on top this thing is just bristling with guns. It's an incredible amount of firepower on this thing, and look at it. Absolutely terrifying. It's generally the same size as an Imperial Knight. It's not miles bigger, but it's 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 more heavily armed, for sure. Loads and loads of weapons available for this thing. So, a terrifying unit to take on, for sure. It's been magnetised. I, I magnetised it before I sent it off to Grey Fox Studios. So the arms move. That's just the way that you can glue them without fixing them, just if you follow the instructions, but uh, have magnetised the torso so it spins around. And then these uh, are all magnetised on top, so they paint up all the weapon options for me, so I can change that around if I need to, to try something else or adjust for points and so on. So, very happy with that. It's Grey Fox Studios have painted this up. I have to say, it's a incredible job that's been done. So I'll put a link to them in this video description below check out Grey Fox Studios, make contact with them if you're interested in painting commission work from them. They're based in uh, the UK. But I'd imagine international uh, wouldn't be a problem. That's the detail at the back. I love being able to spin the torso around, get some great poses, especially in the middle of a game. You know, you swing to fire at a target, you can just move the model around, it just looks great. You can get, get a nice variety of poses just for magnetising the torso. So, that was done, I, I, I cut the top of the dome off, flat magnet on top, and then it creates a hole there, so I, I, I stacked up some magnets stuck to the bottom of the bigger magnet there, just to make that stronger. And then the same here, uh, filled in uh, the basin here, the bowl sort of shaped part here, I've dropped a magnet in, but behind that is stacked some magnets running through the middle of the model, and it just adds some strength. So when that goes on, that's nice and strong, and that's not gonna come off. So if, I'm, if he's leaning over somewhere in the game, then it's not going to fall off there, so that's nice and strong. It means if you swing around, no problem. And just stick these on like so. So that's the model. It's quite incredible, but how do we build this? What configurations do we go for? There's two variations in the Dominus class. I've chosen the Valiant here. We'll take a look at. We'll consider both. Uh, I'll primarily focus on the one that I've gone for, uh, and you know, and why, uh, and then we'll up some dice to uh, give you an idea of, of how these things can perform. But uh, we'll just move the model to the side here. Let's push them over there. So we'll take a look in the codex here. I'll mention households. There's all sorts. I'm not going to cover all of them here. I added. If you want to see. A fuller picture of Imperial Knights with all of the stratagems and all of that discussed, then I have done a full review for the codex, this codex here, and I go through everything. All the stratagems and all of these and discuss all of that in detail. So if you want more of a, a broader idea of what to go for, then check out the codex review, which is already on the channel. It's been up uh, since the codex came out. Uh, but I've gone for yeah, House Terran. But so I tried to build my army in quite an aggressive format. So yes, there's firepower there, but I want this army to be aggressive, head straight towards the enemy and stomp all over them. It's a nice theme, uh, matches of Imperial Knights. I don't think they're really, you know, they've got legs. So they're not, it's not like a gun line type army. This is a gun platform type army and then an army that's not afraid to get stuck in close combat. So with that theme in mind, trying to make an aggressive Imperial Knight list. So the Valiant is the more aggressive, closer range type unit. Uh, but for House Terran, when determining the distance that the unit of this household uh, advances or charges, it can roll an additional d6 and discard the lowest results. So it's 2d6, or when you charge it's 3d6 and you can remove the lowest dice. That is very helpful. I'm trying to get that charge to go ahead, so that's fine. 
And I know there's people argue there's other ones that are perhaps better, uh, but that's fine. It matches the style that I'm going for. So with your Imperial Knights, I very much doubt you'd want to go for a, a defensive army. Uh, the other way to play is sort of advance to the middle of the table and shoot and, and charge here and there. Or you can go for what I'm going for, which is a full-on, not a reckless advance without shooting, but it's a strong advance, firing as they go, closing the range, and then just getting stuck in to anything. So that's the kind of, and it makes a change for an Imperial Army. Uh, you know, think of Guard and a lot of Space Marine chapters, sort of defensive kind of play, but this I can go for an all-out assault. I think it's an exciting way to play. But you can see it here, look, no, no, it looks like the Orcs are defending here. The Imperial Knights are smashing into them. That's the kind of thing I want to go for. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll go through the Valiant here, and we'll turn back and look at a couple of the weapons for the castle in there and sort of discuss why I went for the Valiant in the end. But this is the more aggressive one here. Uh, so this is it's Quester Allegiance, and it's Dominus Class here. So you've got uh, Strength 8, Toughness 8, 28 wounds. So it does have more wounds than the, the average Imperial Knight. 4 attacks, Leadership 9, a 3 up save. Uh, then onto the chart here, between 15 and 28 wounds, you've got a 10 inch move, so it is a bit slower than your standard Imperial Knight. Weapon skill of only 4 plus. So yes, it likes to get in close, but it's close range weapons is more its style. Uh, and then ballistic skill 3+. plus. Got to watch out for that because that could drop quite quick. 8 to 14 wounds remaining. Movement drops to 7, it's pretty slow. Weapon skill 5+, plus, ballistic skill 4+, plus, and then wounds 1 to 7. 4 inch move, that is very slow. Weapon skill 6+, plus, ballistic skill 5+. Plus. So it's a bit of a danger there. If it starts to take some heavy damage, it starts to slow down. So I'm thinking on it. I'll try and get ahead, you know, max move of 10 immediately. Try and get up there before I get slowed down too much. But there is a compensation app for that. One of the reasons why I went for the, the Valiant here. Um, so I'll just go down to here. Iron Shield, 5 plus Invun Save. It's a bit of protection there. That's not too bad. One third of the shots come through and it can be blocked by that Invun Save, no matter how strong they are. Uh, if it explodes, you roll two dice. If you get A6 on one of those dice, it explodes. Units have been 2d6, suffer d6 mortal wounds. If you roll double six, it's 3d6 inches, and it's d6 mortal wounds. So it's a bit scary when it explodes. So you want to spread these knights out a little bit. Don't want them bunched up, just in case one of them, one of them detonates. And then the rules, the usual rules for Super Heavy Walker. You can fall back in the movement phase, you can pull out of combat, and you can still shoot and charge in the same turn. So amazing. So again, another big reason to get stuck in as opposed to vehicles, you know, you've got vehicles you've got to watch out if you get charged, you can't you can pull out, you can't shoot, and all that kind of thing. These things, happy to get stuck in, but they have that flexibility to pull out and shoot and charge. Uh, when this model falls back, it can move over enemy infantry and swarm models, though it must end its move more than an inch away from enemy units. So, you know, your opponent's got a horde at the front, you charge in, you fight, on your next turn, you can literally walk 10 inches over the top of the unit and press on deeper into the enemy positions. <laughs> so you could stride over the top of stuff, which is excellent. Uh, though it must end its move to desert. So in addition, this model can move and fire heavy weapons without suffering the penalty to its hit rolls. Again, another incentive to keep moving, going to suffer no penalty. And finally, this model only gains a bonus to its save for being in cover if at least half the model is obscured from the fire. So I believe the way it works, they need to be entirely within the cover and 50% obscured and then you can get your cover save. I, that's hardly ever going to happen if I'm playing aggressive, striding across the board. So, that's the way that works. So, your options then, you could go, depends again how you want to play. If you want to play more of a measured approach where you're, yes you're moving around the table, but you're relying more on firepower and then stomping in later, then the Castellan would probably be the better option. It's more long range firepower available. So, I'll just give you an idea on points. Here. So, a castle is 510, the Valiant's 500. So, virtually the same. There's not much difference. And you've got to pay out for your weapons on top of that. So, the two main guns you can go for it comes with a plasma decimator and a volcano lance. They are scary weapons. The plasma decimates then range 48. By the time you've moved around the table, you are going to be in range of pretty much everything. Uh, so you can fire a standard, which is heavy 2d6. So, on average, you're looking at about six or seven shots. Strength 7, minus 3 and 1 damage. 
So it's like a hell blaster squad on his arm, <laughs> basically. Uh, supercharge, uh, which is heavy 2d6, strength 8 minus 3 and 2 damage. And for each hit roll of 1, the bearer suffers a mortal wound after all of its weapon shots have been resolved. So I, people said, I've been reading different comments in the videos about this kind of rule. Some say you should be taking a mortal wound per roll of a one that you make, or it should be no matter how many ones you roll. If you just rolled a one or two ones, it doesn't matter how many, you just take a mortal wound. I'm not sure that the correct answer on that. So if you know that, check out the comment section um, and see what other subscribers have said if you're looking for that answer as well. So I think that weapon's okay. I wouldn't call it a tank killer really it's more of a heavy infantry monster slayer the damage is only two so we'll maybe do it quickly here just to give you an idea just i'm just wondering so here's our crash test rhino i think it's wise to this now just very briefly so 2d6 shots that's horrific uh threes and um, say we're supercharging, and that's a six. We have got uh, a six up save to make. Saved, so no damage. <laughs> that was horrific. Try again. There you go, ten shots. Let's put up. Just ignore that first. Not shooting. Uh, so we're overcharging. So either three mortal wounds or one mortal wound, whatever the rules are. That's a miss as well. So that's you got. This is a very good situation here you know 10 shots that's really good those are best pretty average now we're looking for threes to wound yeah this is what this is my problem with this look uh, and save one uh four damage it's not a tank buster this thing and that's the danger that's why i thought the danger would be is you end up firing at tanks because you need some kind of tank busting ability and you end up causing a couple of wounds and it, it ends up being disappointing this is more cut out for taking on heavy infantry at terminators that kind of thing so that's not so keen on the plasma decimator i'm gonna mention another tactic as well with imperial knights you've got the ability to uh fire the ranged weapons and also the ability for close combat i'm trying to capitalize on using both at the same time as much as possible so in a, an imperial knight's better in a turn where it can fire everything and charge into something uh, so that's why I want to play aggressive with them, not just hang around and fire the weapons, but also be able to fire all the weapons and charge stuff, and it just disrupts the opponent a lot more. So I'm, that's why I'm sort of doing aggressive style. So yeah, not that impressed by the plasma decimator just there, as we've seen. I'll cover the other types of weapons in just a moment. The other main weapon here is the volcano lance. Now, I guess this would be your tank buster here. Range 80, heavy D6, yeah, danger there. Strength 14, so you'll be on two to wound, something like this. Uh, AP minus fives, it'll punch straight through. And then uh, 3d3 damage. You can rear all foul wound rolls when targeting titanic units. Right, so it's designed to take on bigger stuff. So, we'll give it a go. I'm gonna target a Rhino, this is a standard vehicle. This is the number of shots, four shots, that's sort of average. Threes to hit, that's the bulk, no, this uh, Rhino's dead. Twos to wound. And it's going to go straight through the armor. <laughs> 3d3. So that's uh, 4. Uh, 9. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 15, 16, 17, 18. 19 wounds that time around. So Rhino's uh, definitely been slain. 19 wounds. Yeah. Decent. If that was a Bane Blade. You've virtually taken it out, so scary enough. Volcano Lance is uh, is nasty. Number of shots. That's what I worry about. Is a shot. Come on, reroll. <laughs> Two shots. Yeah, that's the worry. Missed with one. This is the problem. Uh, foul to wound, and that's it. I suppose it happens. No matter what, every weapon's sort of dice based, but. Not so good, that one. Okay, that time around at least. But the Volcano Lance, the potential there to take out a tank with ease, for sure, and cause trouble for, for much bigger units as well. So out of the two, the Volcano Lance is nasty enough. That's specifically your armoured destroyer. So that's your options. It's not bad. 
It's not bad at all. Both weapons are pretty good. So the Knight Valiant then. Some uh, fascinating weapons this one has. And this is a closer range type stuff. So I'll cover these. The first is the Conflagration Cannon. I was very much drawn to this. Range 18. Let's say I'll... I don't usually do this. I usually do roll the dice at the end, but we'll do it as we go along. Just to be different. I mean, it'd be handy just to see as we as we go along here. So, uh, the other great thing, tactics. You see, fire two weapons at these targets, but how much better is it to fire your weapons at targets and then be able to charge in as well? You know, you're getting more value out of the unit if you're able to do shooting and charging. I see that as a big advantage for Imperial Knights. And there should be no harm in getting stuck in because you're able to pull out and shoot and charge unaffected. Massive advantage, so I want to play to that kind of style. Anyway, let's go for the Conflagration Cannon into both of these targets. You've got an infantry target here, which is, you know, you'd think that's what it's designed for, but I reckon it shouldn't do too bad against vehicles as well. So, we'll take on the Rhino. 3d6. There, that's a bit below average. But the great thing about this is it's auto hits in the target, so I've hit it with eight hits already. The great advantage of this is no matter what damage that's taken, it's always auto hitting. Massive advantage. So this could be on its last wound, but this will fire at its full capacity every time. The other great thing is Overwatch. If this gets charged by something, then uh, it's well protected there by that. That's auto hits, 3d6 auto hits. I haven't command rerolled. We'll stick with the eight hits. Uh, it's, it's actually strength seven, minus two and two damage. So pause for wounds. It's very, very poor. Uh, five to save, save one, it's just two damage that time. Uh, there are ways to improve that, which we'll cover later on. We'll do one more go. That's 13 hits here. This is good. So that is a good roll. Fours for wounds. Again, terrible uh, dice roll in here. Look at that. Five to save. Save one, but that would be eight damage. That runner's almost been destroyed. And that was a poor uh, roll to wound, so pretty good. Do one more round just to, I'm interested to see here. Ah, not so good. Eight hits there with a double one and a six. Better, they won the wounding. And fives to save. Oh, that's a good roll. Okay, so four damage comes through. But it can put damage onto vehicles. We're going to the infantry now. So 18, we don't need to move any closer. Nice, good long range of this one. Uh, so seven hits. You'd be tempted to use a command reroll there. Uh, threes to wound. Fives to save. None. All right. So six marines uh, burnt to a crisp. But if that was primary, sort of, you know, two wound models, uh, it's two damage a time. So pretty good. Let's see if we can burn them out again. Think better. Eight hits. Seems to be the average here in this video. Yep. They were wounded. Fives to save. Yeah, about six dead. So yeah, pretty good damage. And then you'd have to be able to flame them and then charge them to finish them off. That's the kind of idea I'm thinking of. So that weapon's all right. It's, uh, you know, the range isn't too bad for a flame weapon. 3d6 is a lot of auto hits. Strength seven minus two and two damage is good. Um, you saw there, probably better against infantry. So that's that one. Matches the aggressive style, no problem at all. The other is the Thunder Coil Harpoon. Range 12. Heavy one, you do only get one shot. But if you do get that hit, it's strength 16. <laughs> Incredible. Minus six on the AP and 10 damage. So, you know, your Rhino's wrecked. You can reroll failed hit rolls when targeting vehicle or monster units. Excellent. That is so useful. That saves that command reroll. In addition, if this weapon inflicts any damage, the target suffers D3 mortal wounds on top of that as well. So, brilliant. I just, that's very cool. Right, so fire this into the, you know, this will bust the lean rust each turn, potentially. Right, so three plus to hit the Rhino, got him. Twos for a wound, it's minus five, 10 damage, plus three, 13 <laughs> wounds, gone. I love that weapon. Next, hits, doesn't wound, You'd have to come out and reroll that one for sure. Got the wound, and uh, 11 wounds, that's your def that's your, uh, mortal wound, so 11 wounds in total. Try and hit again. Two. Reroll it. Just for the rules. Got the hit. 
Fouts a wound, <laughs> come on, reroll. Typical, got the wound. And, and then minus five, 10 damage, plus three more mortal wounds. Superb. I just, I think that's brilliant. You know, and if a flyer gets too close, um, <laughs> if a flyer gets too close, you could pull it out of the sky. Got it, it's 12 inches, but if you play aggressive, I think uh, you can do it. But the, the ability to get the rerolls to hit against vehicles and monsters, that's superb. That is so useful. Damage 10 is absolutely terrifying, plus the water wounds. Uh, AP minus 6 and the strength 16 is superb. It's a brilliant weapon. I just, I think it's so, so good. Okay, so for those re for those reasons, it's matching my aggressive style of play. I like these weapons here. There's something different about them. Uh, they're good fun. So that's the configuration of Gunfall. Let's have a little look at something here. I'm just interested in this. The Volcano Lance, zero. Okay, Thundercore Harpoon, zero. Um, and then... Uh, Plasma Decimator, zero. All right, so doesn't matter which ones. And Configuration Cannon, zero. All right, so it's not like a choose your points. They're all incorporated into the cost of the model. So the other supporting weapons, and I, I like this, I like these supporting weapons because it means it's not all close range. I've got some nice long range stuff in the form of the weapons that are mounted here uh, on top. Plus this thing comes with these melters. You're gonna crack open some vehicles. These are twin melter shots. There's four melter shots can come from this as well. Uh, which is superb. Twin melter gun, assault two. So if you are on the advance, you can still fire them. Range twelve, and the usual rules for melter. So it comes with uh, two twin melter guns as a standard loadout, four siege breaker missiles, and Titanic feet, and a twin siege breaker cannon. So that's his standard loadout there with the two missiles or two sets of missiles, four in total, and this turret on top. You can replace two of its Siege Breaker missiles with a t twin Siege Breaker cannon. So that's why I have my magnetized. You can go like this instead. Like that. If you want to go like so. I'm not totally sure. I, I re really don't know at this stage what I'm going to go for. So I'm glad I did get the magnetized. But we'll say we've gone for, for this one here. Like so. All right. So. Um, Siege Breaker Missile, range 48, see, brilliant range. Heavy one, strength 10, minus four, D6 damage. You only fire once per battle, so you gradually use them up. So if I only take two of them, you're gonna get two shots in the game and then they're gone. Um, as opposed to the turrets, which are always there, chucking out the shots. This is the advantage of them. Um, invun saves can't be taken against wounds caused by this weapon. So you can choose a good target, a target that's got a decent invun save you can hit it with the missile, but you're only looking at D6 damage. It's not really looking to take a vehicle out, but at least to cause some kind of trouble. Uh, that is 12 points, so it's a cheaper option. Uh, 12 points would become 24 if you're taking two of them. The other option is to take the twin Siege Breaker Cannon, which is 35 points, so 11 points more you're paying, but you're paying for something that's always there. It's on the model, and it's not like one use only. So I'm tempted to go to two cannons here, because they're two D3 shots. So on average about three or four shots. Strength seven, minus one, and D3 damage a time. So you're gonna cause some wounds. That's what you're expecting, but again, it's not really gonna take much out. We'll fire into the Rhino here, the Twin Siege Breaker cannon. Uh, so that is five shots. Threes. Fours to wound. A wound comes through and it's saved probably a yellow four. So it's all right, you see, I, it's okay. We'll fire again. But I'm thinking, you're, you're looking just to pick up some wounds. Four shots. A hit. A wound. Not saved. Um, D3 damage. Three wounds. You can pick up some. So you can help to destroy targets, but that's about as much as you can expect. Uh, the missile. Probably going to miss it. No, it hits. Uh, strength 10, so freeze to wound. The wound comes through, it's minus four, D6 damage. Three. Seems like they're causing roughly the same kind of damage. So I'd be tempted to go with the, the double siege breaker cannons. So then you've got four D3 shots. Yeah, you could start to half kill vehicles with that. 
but uh, it's something to be experimented with for sure. And so that's it. And then close combat will cover that. So the ability to charge in. So it has the option of its feet. Yeah. So uh, you get four attacks. Make three hit rolls for each attack made with this weapon. So let's say he's gone into the, the rhino here. So four attacks. So three, 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 and three. So it's going to get 12 attacks. Hitting on fours. So terrible dice roll in here. These tower dice are not doing so well. Uh, a wound comes through and saved. I'll try again. This is against the rhino. Forced hit. <laughs> Shucking dice roll. Two wounds come through. No saves. And four wounds caused. Cool. Stop that. So yeah, that might be enough to finish the target off. This is better. But I wouldn't... You're not going to rely on this guy in close combat. But just to cause a bit more damage in close combat. That's the idea. Freeze to win. Fives to save. And that's the damage. Three damage, so not so great. So, yeah, it can contribute in close combat, but you can't expect much more. So, the, from what we've seen... I think the damage is going to come from this harpoon here. Terrifying. You can go after vehicles with that. Conflagration can is going to cause trouble. Go and enhance that a bit later on, I'll show you. And then these melters, I think they can cause trouble as well. And then just a bit of support coming in. But all in all, you're looking at taking out a vehicle or two a turn with that at its full capacity, I reckon. All right, so we've looked at some the rules, the stats, the weapons. We've tried them out. How can you make this thing even better? So, this thing is going to get shot at, obviously. So you're looking to protect it as much as possible. I'm not going to go for all the stratagems. Rotate iron shields is one of the examples there. You can improve your invon save. If you're anticipating you're going to get shot, you play, rotate the iron shields. Your invon save goes from 5 plus to 4 plus. That's very useful. But you can combine that with uh, option number two for warlord traits, which is iron bulwark. bulwark. Your warlord has a 4 plus invon save against ranged weapons. So all of a sudden, uh, your invon save gets improved a lot. Because you... Yeah, it's fine. I'm just checking it here. Rotate iron shields. Use a stratagem an enemy that targets an Imperial Knight's vehicle from your army. There's an invon save. Uh, the stratagem costs 3 points if the targeted is a Dominus class. Ouch. <laughs> Ouch, that's painful. Three command points. Otherwise, it's one command point. That's gonna suck in your command points like crazy. Mmm. So to get around that, that's expensive to play. You really want to go for this iron bulwark. Uh, four plus invon save against ranged weapons. So half the shots coming, you can block them. That's gonna make it twice as hard to kill. That's what I go for. The iron bulwark for sure. Yeah. I guess. Unless you've got like a, some Imperial Guard Brigade nearby uh, in your army that can dish out loads of command points, you don't mind spending them, but that is expensive. Uh, that's the one that I'd probably take. Uh, there's plus one to attack. I wouldn't bother with that because you're not really expecting much in close combat. This one I do like. I wish I could take that one. Land Strider. Add two to all advance and charge rolls made for friendly household units of in six. That include his own, the own, his own model and the others nearby. So you're on two for advance and plus two to your charge rolls. That's really, really good. So land strike is excellent, especially for that style of play, the aggressive style. Uh, and then this one, I do like this one, blessed by the, uh, the sacristans. Choose one weapon, not an heirloom of the noble houses that your warlord is equipped with. Each time make an unmodified wound roll of six, that weapon the target suffers a mortal wound addition. Uh, to normal damage. So sixes, that would be good on the conflagration cannon. So you get all those automatic hits, and any sixes after that's mortal wounds. But there's a relic you can take that could be better. Fears and reputation, I wouldn't bother, that's just from around. Uh, I'm locked into Terran, which is reroll charge rolls for your warlord, which is okay. But I wouldn't be too fussed on that because I'm not so anxious to get him into close combat, so I'm just getting him close is the key. So, on to uh, Heirlooms of the Noble Houses, and by all means, if I've missed stuff here in this Tactica, then check out the comments section below, or you leave your own feedback, or if you're watching this, check out what others have said. 
uh, le uh, their own tips for using this specific type of night here. And no doubt there's some people, I'm fresh to using this, but no doubt there'll be some viewers that have had some long time experience playing against or using this loadout here. Uh, the one I had a, an eye on was the Traitor's Pie yeah, here. So remember you're going to get a, a relic, you can purchase more with command points, but you're going to get one for free in your army. Traitor's Pyre, heavy 18. Uh, it replaces the Conflagration Cannon. It becomes heavy 3d6, strength 7 minus 2, 2 damage, that's fine, but it also hits on the target and it's reroll wounds, you get the reroll wounds. And in that, some of those examples back there, especially against the Rhino, that was useful. For example, there you go. So that's the hits. 11. And 9, 10, 11. And I'll look into wound. Fours. And I'm going to reroll all of them. And you're turning five wounds into nine wounds. That makes the difference. Fives to save. Does well. But. That's 12 wounds and it destroyed the vehicle. You know, that relic has made the difference between a half killed rhino and destroying the target. So that immediately, I might mightily tempted to go after uh, Traitor's Pyre here. That's pretty good. Um, I, I had the idea of combining it with Blessed Fellow Sacristans, causing mortal wounds. You're rerolling the wounds, six is being generated, and then causing mortal wounds on top of that. But you can't take it along with uh, an heirloom of the noble houses. So it has to stand as it is. But I like that one there. And the other one, yeah, is Armour of the Sainted Iron. The save characteristic of 2 plus. That is superb. Ugh. <laughs> Tough choices to make. The 2 up armour save. Ugh. So it's difficult choices, but things that could be experimented with for sure. Do I enhance that or do I try and keep them alive a bit better with a 2 up, in, in, uh, two up save? So that's the options. So just looking at the stratagems here, there's uh, <laughs> some pretty good ones. Exalted Court, use a stratagem before the battle after you've chosen your Warlord. Choose one Questorius class or Dominus class model from your army for one command point. Or choose two such models for three command points. Each model you choose gains a character keyword and you can choose an Imperial Knights Warlord trait for them. Superb. Right, so that's excellent. So you can then start spreading out those Warlord traits because I'm struggling to choose there. So I can put Blessed by the Sacristans on one of them, Iron Bulwark on the other. Uh, superb. Excellent. Then once you're getting characters you can start then equipping them with these uh, relics as well. Uh, full tilt's a good one. Uh, you can advance and then charge. Superb. Uh, death breaker guidance system or oath breaker guidance system. Uh, you can choose use a siege shield breaker missile. You can target a unit that's not visible and it can be a character as well. Brilliant. So, yeah, there's some great ones in here. You know, I've heard people say that the stratagems for the knights are some of the best that are out there. So, there's some great examples here. So, yeah, glory or honour here for House Terran in the fight phase. Three command points, you can then fight again. So, there's lots of good ones there for sure uh, for the Imperial Knights. But it's a scary model, this one. So, looking forward to it. And you know, why have a scary model just hanging around? I think just send it straight in uh, towards the opponent's army and then plunge it into the heart <laughs> of, their, of their force. So I hope you'll not be alone. You'll be surrounded by some other knights and supporting units as well. So uh, as I mentioned, the model's been superbly painted. It's by Grey Fox Studios. I'll put a link to them in the channel, uh, in the video description below. Uh, but an excellent job and they're available. That company's available for taking on commissions at the moment. But uh, a great stride ahead to get this model done. They're making great progress with this Imperial Knights Army. Looking forward to the day when 2,000 points are assembled and ready for war. But keep a look out for more uh, tactical. I was going to say more tactical. I, pretty, I think I've pretty much covered it now. We've covered the Dominus class. Uh, the Armaga class. Yeah, they've all been covered now. So I think we've pretty much finished this series. Just a case of adding in uh, some other models. Yeah, I'm thinking yeah, there might be some more Tactica. We'll see. Not giving anything away yet, but uh, there may be some more on the way. But uh, that is the uh, Tactica showcase video here for the Imperial Knight Valiant Dominus class. Keep a lookout for it being used in perhaps some alliances. And then we look forward to the day when the final army is ready for war. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.